Hello everybody. Well, it's vacuum of the month time again. I can't believe it's already the 1st of September. I don't know where August went. It just whizzed by for me. I don't know if it whizzed by for you, but for me, that's August. Where, where's it been? During August, we had a couple of uh, mini heat waves in the UK and I filmed a couple of videos wearing shorts, but I think tomorrow is the start of autumn officially in the UK, or it might be today. Anyway, it's very soon. So the, the legs will remain covered up for quite some months uh, because, yeah, we don't get many hot uh, days in the UK, certainly not, uh, not up where I live in Yorkshire. So it's vacuum of the month time. I've got August's vacuum of the month, the Hoverk, what was it? VB100 cordless cleaning system. So I'll discuss that. And then I'm going to be unboxing a brand new vacuum that I'm going to be using for Vacuum of the Month for September. And it's a brand I've not featured for quite a while. So some of you might like it, some of you may not, but um, I thought I'll give this brand another go. But before we unbox next month's or this month's now, September's Vacuum of the Month, before we unbox September's Vacuum of the Month, let's discuss the vacuum of the month for August. I've gathered together all the accessories you can buy for this cordless cleaner. If you want the cleaner on its own, which is basically the main unit, plus this combination nozzle, that will set you back 749 pounds. So we're into Dyson territory. And it's just, for that money, for 749 pounds, you get a cordless vacuum cleaner, a stick type cordless cleaner, three suction settings, two brush roll speeds, bag check indicator, removable battery, and this takes bags, and it's very creaky. Stay. It takes bags, and the bags are pretty expensive, and they fill up fairly quickly. So this machine is expensive to buy, and expensive to maintain and run. Well, not maintain, it's expensive for the bags and they're quite small. I suspect the bag that's in there will be pretty full. I didn't start with a brand new bag because I already had a bag in use and I didn't want to start with a new one when I had more space. But after, after about a week, uh, it was time to change the bag and I put another bag in and possibly the bag might need changing now after another three weeks of use around my home. As an upright, cleaner in this configuration for cleaning carpets and floors. It is one of the best cordless cleaners I've used. It's very light in the hand because all the weight is lower down. So it's very easy to push, light to carry, and it's quite effective for cleaning carpets and hard floors. Even on my plush pile Saxony, it works fine. Not on maximum suction, the brush does stall, on about medium, medium setting, with the brush roll running at high speed, then it's fine, absolutely fantastic. We'll have a look at the brush roll because I haven't touched it since I started using this machine for the month. It's a, It's got a bit grubby, you know. There's a bit of a residue, I can feel a sticky residue. This happens with all upright cleaners or cylinder cleaners, the base plates of those. No matter how clean you keep your carpets, constant rubbing on the various floor surfaces does pick up a little residue, so that will need wiping off. And the brushes are quite dirty as well. No pet hair around it, there's a few threads, but it stayed relatively clear of pet hair. So this is a very good nozzle. It's narrow, but for my house it's ideal. It gets into all the tight spots. I can just do the whole house with this machine my kitchen floor, living room. The stairs, you can do, do the stairs with this machine. You don't need the optional hose. It's very light, so you can just move the machine this way. I mean, that's about the width of an average stair. So what I tend to do, if I'm doing a quick top to bottom or bottom to top clean, I would clean half the stair in that direction, go all the way up to the top of the stairs in that direction, and then as I'm coming down, I go like that, so that's the whole stairwell clean, and then I, I can go up again and clean the bedrooms. And then I've got another set of stairs in my house, uh, clean the same way, and then top floor where I have a bedroom 
and an ensuite, so carpet and hard floor, that it's very good for. For using this though, I don't use this attachment. This is supposed to be for some above floor jobs, but it's attached to this. I mean, it is fairly light, but you could, I suppose, reach up for the cobwebs. You've got the brush here, and you've also got a little sort of crevice tool, and that's okay for going around the edges of your room like this. But it's, yeah, it's not very good, but it's okay. So if you just want a vacuum for carpets and floors, and just doing around the crevices around uh, the sides of your room, you could use it on upholstery, I suppose, at a push. But that will cost you £749. Now, so that is good. I mean, it's expensive, but good. It's not worth that money, but I do like it. Very nice cleaner to use. What sells this to me more than the regular cleaner is the optional SPB 100 hard floor head. My kitchen floor has never been so clean. It's been cleaned once every couple of days instead of once a week. And instead of using the normal head here to clean my kitchen floor, this has just been in the corner of my kitchen ready to go. And I've just, what I've done, I've cleaned the living room. I've taken off the normal floor head and then I've pot, put it on the hard floor head and then I've gone on to clean my kitchen and it is very, very good. I do have additional microfiber pads, so I've got about nine, I think, in total. So once I've used it, if the kitchen floor isn't very dirty, I can use the microfiber head for the next time. But if it gets dirty, I just eject the pad. It goes in the washing machine. This will suck up dry dirt as well as cleaning the floor. So it's got side channels, well, front and back channels. And then in the middle, that's where the microfiber pad goes. That vibrates at high speed. Cleaning solution is moistened onto the pad. It drips onto the pad. So you're making a complete clean sweep. It picks up the dry debris and then mops the floor at the same time. So it's two in one. I didn't have to vacuum or sweep the floor before using this head. So for me, that was ideal. You can buy this as a hard floor set as well. It comes with the main cleaner and it also comes with this head as standard. I can't remember how much that bundle costs. I've been on their website. It's not very easy to navigate to find the prices. So you can also buy it separate as well if you decide you want it, but I'm sure it's about 450 pounds just for the head. But it is very good, I have to say. So it's redeemed itself. Now, as for all the other tools, I have to be honest and say I haven't used them very much. I have used them a bit, but not even weekly. Maybe a few times I've used these tools during the course of the month and I haven't used all of them. I've used the standard flexible hose and this is the nozzle I've used the most and my favorite nozzle, the dusting brush. So just before making this video, there was quite a few dead flies on my, um, what do you call it? Windowsill, that's it. I was gonna say mantelpiece, but windowsill. And uh, I use this to pick them up. But this is ideal as well for, for delicate dusting because of this, very good. I really like, this is one of my most favorite nozzles of any vacuum cleaner, to be honest. You can do your crystal chandelier with that. Very delicate things, but it retracts. So it's equally good on your shelving and uh, your books and things if you want to dust those. So this, this has been used and the other nozzle again, it's a, a very good, one of my favorite crevice nozzles actually. I did use this around the kitchen, down the sides of my washing machine and fridge freezer and it bends as well. So you can go underneath things and it pulls out, well that, that comes off, it pulls out. So you can get underneath things providing they've got enough height between the bottom of whatever you're cleaning underneath and the floor. So very good as well, this flexible nozzle. And this, this will reach up high for your cobwebs, etc. So that, you, that got used. And uh, oh, I did use this upholstery nozzle a bit, maybe a couple of times during the month. It's a, an upholstery combined with a, a sort of a crevice tool, crevice tool like that, upholstery nozzle like that and it's a very nice design. I do like the tools 
on the uh, Volvert cleaners and that is lovely on your curtains and also on your upholstered furniture so there's that so didn't use this because I didn't do any drilling that attaches to the end of the crevice tool clamps itself to the wall and then when you drill a hole in the wall it collects all the dust and I haven't used this either it's a sort of a wall and floor brush attachment that actually fits if I can open it up no, it is that way there we go it fits onto the end of the combined upholstery and dusting tool and um, yeah I think I use this once or twice your extendable telescopic wand and also that's your normal set but you can also buy this set as an option or included in certain bundles I have used this a few times I've done it on the stairs maybe three or four times I clean the stairs it's good for the risers as well with the counter rotating brushes you can see it's got a bit of thread wrapped around it but I haven't actually used this which is for cleaning mattresses and I'll have to do a separate video cleaning mattresses well, it's got a few bits falling out so what you do with this you'd vacuum the mattress thoroughly and uh, there we go using this head with these rubber blades so vacuum your mattress then you sprinkle on the special powder designed specifically for mattress cleaning and you could use it on upholstery I suppose and then you'd attach this unusual device that rotates and agitates the powder into the mattress rubs it in wait half an hour remove it and then you vacuum up the dry powder using that nozzle so that that will have to be a separate video but that again that's optional if you want that or it comes in certain bundles you can get it together you can save a little bit of money if you buy the whole bundle so that's about everything you get I bought the ultimate set but the ultimate set I'm pretty sure didn't include this it included all the other tools but you had to buy this this particular set separate but you'll have to go on their website if you've if you've got lots of money and I don't know I don't know who's got lots of money at the moment especially in the UK everyone's worrying about how much they're going to be charged to heat and light their homes this winter coming so this sort of thing is going to be I'm afraid well out of the reach of most people watching my videos I think but it's even if you've got a lot of money it's possibly a lot of money to spend on a vacuum cleaner so in conclusion yeah I've enjoyed using it one of my favorite cordless machines but it costs a fortune if this was half the price I would I would be recommending it but um, at the price it sells for it's a very very considered purchase but yeah the hard floor head is excellent carpet and floors for that again excellent and we'll have a look at the bag quickly so the bag's located behind this door here so the little catch and the whole bag comes out and seals itself some dirt does tend to spill out a bit hold the bag up that way and then you can pull pull it out of the holder I've also put in oh there's two in there I wondered why it stopped smelling I put another one in that's just one of the fragrance chips it's designed for the, their other cleaners but I just pop one in the bag compartment and I've got two in there because it started to smell a bit so that that's pretty full so I will change it yeah that's nearly up to the top so that that will go in the bin and it will be replaced with a new one so it's very clean you know there's no messy filters it's um, a very clean way of disposing the dirt but you have the cost of the uh, of the bags what am I doing is that the way it's a while since I've put a new bag in oh no it's just that way I think you can't use this machine without the bag either that's it that's the bag in place now filters combined there you can see the filter the filters very clean it's clean inside the bag housing there's a little bit of dirt at the bottom but that can just be wiped I would normally wipe that with a wet wipe or something 
but not at the moment. So new bag in there. And that's ready for the next time. I will probably leave this out and use this as my sort of quick clean up daily machine because I have enjoyed using this. I still need to use the other attachments more. I want to uh, clean my mattress using the mattress cleaning accessory kit and do a few other jobs around the house. Oh yes, battery. It comes with one battery. You can buy a separate battery if you want one on the go. I would recommend buying another battery if you live in a larger house. I did have to charge this up a lot, especially when using the floor head. For best results, I use the floor head on maximum maximum suction so it gives you the most suction but on maximum it also oscillates the microfiber pad at the higher speed because as you reduce the setting on the machine the pad goes slower so for longer runtime you use it at lower setting but for best performance then i always used it on high and i found that i had to charge the machine a lot it never ran out of power during a job but i had to make sure after every time i used it i plugged it back in until it was charged so that's it's quite heavy on the battery when using this head. For this head, using it on its medium setting, you can get quite a lot of house cleans whipping up and down um, before you need to charge. But I tended to plug the machine in every evening. Okay, so it's goodbye to the Cobalt and hello to September's vacuum of the month. It's just arrived today, so that's handy. Let's get it opened. Yes, folks, I mentioned earlier in the video that I'll be featuring a brand I've not featured for a while. And it's the Love em or Hate em Dyson. And this is one of the latest Dysons. This is the Dyson V12 Detect Slim Absolute. This was a bit of an impulse buy. Now, this is supposed to be refurbished. I bought it from Dyson's store on eBay. So this was £100 less than normal because it's refurbished. But also, there was a flash sale it was either 20 or 25 percent off that price so i got a further discount off the refurbished price so it was still well over 400 pounds but it brought it down from what it normally retails at which is over 600 i believe so it says it's refurbished but normally i've had dyson refurbished cleaners before and they've come in plain boxes this one seems to be a new model i don't know but we'll have a look and I suspect, yes, it's just packaged. It's packaged just like a brand new cleaner. So whether it is brand new, it might well be brand new, but it was sold as a refurbished machine. So I wonder if we've got a proper instruction book in here this time. I think the last Dyson cordless I opened didn't have a full instruction book. You had to look at it online. And I didn't like that. I don't think this is the instructions. This is compliance and safety instructions so yes again I don't think this has got the instruction book we've got this though so there is a QR code on the back of this little leaflet Slip that off and you can scan that and you can register your machine with Dyson and it does have A quick start guide but there are videos on Dyson's website and there'll be full instructions if you want to look at that obviously you have to have an internet connection or your mobile phone most people these days do so that's fine and dandy okay let's see what we get first down to the box I'll take these tools here so these are some of the small tools crevice tool and combination nozzle by the looks of it So there's your tried and tested Dyson combo tool. You can use it on your curtains, use it on your upholstery, inside the car. If you need a soft brush, you just press on the button there, slide the soft brush, and it is a nice flared soft brush for doing your lampshades, your delicate equipment, that sort of thing. So that, uh, that design's been going quite some time, probably since the first Dyson cordless then we've got a standard crevice tool, sort of medium length. I'd say that's about 20 centimeters. So a nice length of tool there to get into your nooks and crannies. 
Also, in this one, we've got another a little dusting tool. Can I open it without damaging it in case I have to send it back? There we are. So this is um, a smaller version of their slim, longer dusting tool, but it is still pretty good. I do like this design. Again, this is for doing your shelving. You can uh, do your picture frames with it, pictures on the wall. Because the brushes are flared, it does get right into the corners. So a nice soft brush and you've got a little velour soft pad there and the Dyson click fitting. So that's another tool. Now, depending where you buy this from, I think there's different versions of this if you go on Dyson's website. So this is uh, what I got with mine. But I know there's a version that might come with an ad additional tool. So this is the wand. And it is a slimmer wand. It's possibly the same dimensions as the Dyson, the micro version. So this is a V12 Detect Slim Absolute. There you go. Inside this box is your charger, your wall mounted charger. which I won't be using, but you've got instructions of how to attach it to the wall. All the fittings are included, the screws. So that will hold the machine plus two of the accessories. If you want to wall mount it, I'm not going to. You don't have to, of course. You can charge the machine just by plugging in the mains adapter. This is the small anti-tangle anti screw nozzle i personally prefer the previous one which has a lot more brushes denser brushes than this one but this is designed not to tangle up hairs and it's got a movable base plate you can just see it moves up and down so it should stay flat against the surface you're cleaning and this is of course it's got its own separate motor just located in here so it's not an air powered thing and what's this do Oh, ah, that's good. I have got another of these nozzles I, I unboxed on a previous Dyson. I don't know if I showed you that, but that comes off so it's easy to clean out. It shouldn't get covered in hair because it's an anti-tangle nozzle, but that is good. That whole thing comes off if you want to give that a clean. So, yep, thumbs up for that. Anything that's easy to take apart for cleaning is uh, okay my book right <laughs> is it easy to put back together There's, there will be a knack perhaps you have to push it in right i'll put that to one side can't do it at the moment sure it's an easy thing to do once you know what you're doing now we've got another nozzle in here this is the laser detect hard floor head now Dyson were showing this on their Facebook. Dyson often appears on my Facebook feed and uh, this nozzle was highlighted and I would say 98% of the comments on that uh, post from Dyson were negative. Either going on about Brexit, moving the production from the UK or saying, well, my shark's better, my shark's got a headlight. Uh, this is a laser detect headlight. It's not the same sort of thing as an LED headlight on a shark. Of course, vacuum cleaners have had headlights for many, many years. You know, even pre-war models had headlights. It's not new. I have used this with my V15. And I wasn't that impressed. It works better in lower lighting areas if you've got a very bright room. But it does actually, I was using my V15 a few days ago, just quickly upstairs. And it does actually highlight the dirt that's not normally visible. So that is really specifically for hard floors. You can have the laser light on or off. So there's that. You don't have to change the nozzles. What I liked about last month's vacuum of the month, I did obviously I changed the nozzles when I was washing the floor, but I could have just used the standard nozzle and gone onto my hard floor. And you don't have to with the Dyson. This particular nozzle and it's not one of the later nozzles either it's not one of the anti-tangle ones this is the old version 
So this is equally good on carpets and hard floors because you've got the stiff nylon brushes for your carpets and these softer carbon fibre ones. I think they've improved them. For earlier models, the carbon fibre wore away pretty quickly. So again, that can be used for both carpets and hard floors. And does it have an adjustment? No, this one doesn't have an adjustment on it. Mmm, that could prove problematic for this carpet because there's no adjustment uh, at the front. So it probably have to be used on the lower setting or it might not be suitable at all. I'll soon find out. Anyway, that's your standard nozzle for carpets and hard floors. And I think, well, there's the cleaner, but we, we also are the charger you need that of course so that's the charger so as I said you don't have to put it on the wall you can charge it directly and we've also got the clip that fits to the wand and it'll hold the two small tools so here's the cleaner itself and it, it looks brand new it really does it doesn't look like it's refurbished no, that's nothing right there. I think that's everything. We can move the box out of the way. And, yeah, a little bit lighter than the standard models. Ah, you can still, that's good. I think you can take, yes. I like the removable battery, something Dyson introduced maybe a couple of years ago now, started introducing that. People wanted to have a removable battery. It makes it easier to change the battery if the battery fails and you need a replacement, but also it means you can buy a separate battery if you want to, so you've, you're never running out of power. You've always got one spare battery ready to put in the machine if it goes flat while you're cleaning. And I believe, yes, you can. You can charge the battery on its own like that or charge it when it's actually in the machine itself. I don't know how much charge we've got with this. And one thing that people have been screaming for, one of the most frequent complaints with previous Dysons is the trigger, no trigger as you can see. And even I find it tiring. People say, oh, you only have to do a feather touch, but it's still, for me, it hurts my finger holding it down. And a lot of people have said things about uh, they wish there was an on-off switch. Well, there is, here. That's permanently on when you press the button, so let's press it now. So it stays on until you press the button again. Now, we've, this has also got that dirt detect feature that I've shown you before. To be honest, it's it's a little bit gimmicky. Some, some Dyson geeks will find it fascinating, but in normal use, once the novelty's worn off and you can see various uh, particles of dirt sized dirt particles being picked up, you look at this display, after a while you just don't bother looking at it. It really, uh, it, it's, it's just for show in my opinion. So it started off on medium. So we've got three speeds, eco, medium and boost. I suspect I'll be using this on medium most of the time. Possibly I'll have to use it on eco on this carpet because previous Dysons, if you go anything above the lowest setting, the brush roll stalls. Uh, we've got the filter again at the back. That's the only filter to be washed. This is a single unit that needs washing. And um, it's telling you now, it's got the same sort of display as the bigger version. It's telling me that there's no filter and it won't, it shouldn't work without the filter. No, it won't switch on. So the filter has to be in place. Emptying, it's a small bin as you can see. It's a slim, lighter version. So I suspect this will need emptying after every use. But it empties in the same way as the bigger Dysons. Push down on this little red lever and then the bottom opens up for the dirt to remove itself and hopefully it should remove because it does sort of help the dirt out and sort of wipes with a little ring around the middle. It wipes the 
central shroud clean of any hairs etc this should be able to be removed as well yes that comes off if you need to give it a more thorough clean always keep the seals clean on a dyson if they get grit underneath them they're not going to seal so well so make sure you keep those clean if you find you, after you've cleaned them your dyson bin doesn't open as easily or this part doesn't move up and down a little bit of talcum powder just brushed on um, solves that problem so i do have a small bottle of talcum powder that i only use for this purpose i don't use talcum powder on my skin and if you read uh, the news you'll see that uh, the makers of johnson and johnson baby powder they're stopping making it because it's been proved to to give people cancer and they've had to pay out a lot of money to ladies that have got breast cancer and other cancers from using their talcum powder so don't get it anywhere near your skin but for rubbing on the seals of your dice and it's fine but they're, they're stopping making that. There'll be other talcs available that don't have the nasties in, I suspect. So this comes off and you can, you know, if you need to, give it a clean. I showed a video of an air duster fairly recently and I took a Dyson, my V10 Dyson out, which was the one I've used the most, but hardly at all, but the most of all the Dysons. And the amount of dirt that it blew out from inside where the cyclones are was amazing. So... Yeah, I'll be using this for a whole month, so it'll be interesting to see how much dirt I can blow out of this. But yeah, I like it at the moment because it's lighter than the other Dysons I've had, apart from the Dyson Micro, that's uh, even lighter, but sort of mid-weight, certainly lighter than the outsize machine. Yeah, so let's see, put this back. That's it. It should lock in place. Yeah, so the default is medium when you first switch on. You can use, of course, if you want to do your stairs, and you don't want to use a small nozzle, you can attach the full size nozzle to the end. And naturally, all the other small tools will fit onto it. The laser detect head. I mean, if you have stairs that don't have carpet, they're just either, I don't know, wooden or stone, marble stairs, if you live in a palace, you can use this. I'll turn the laser on. So there's that. And, of course, the uh, anti-tangle. Let's, let's give it another go. I'll need to study the instructions properly. There'll be a knack to it. Oh, that's it. It slides on. Is that it? That's it. You just need to make sure it's in the groove. So that's that. And, of course, all the tools will actually fit onto the end of the wand as well, naturally for doing your floors, all the tools, including the non-powered tools, the small anti-tangle screw head as well, and of course the main carpet and floor nozzle and the laser detect nozzle. I'm going to run this over this carpet and see if it's going to stall. Obviously this needs a full charge, it has got some charge. It should tell me actually, when you turn the machine on, whatever setting you use it on, it'll give you an approximate running time. To charge the Dyson you can obviously attach the dock to the wall and every time you put the machine in for storage it will automatically charge. If you don't want to put holes in your wall obviously you can just charge it like this. Put your Dyson next to the plug socket or on your kitchen worktop and it'll charge away and it tells you just on the display there the state of charge. I just need to press the on button again and we've got that coming up. So it's got 35% charge at the moment.
on the default medium slash auto setting this Dyson worked fine I could hear the motor increase in speed after it detected dirt that's how the dirt sensor works and when it increased the speed it was hard to push but I couldn't see any stalling of the brush now on eco it was fine it was easier to push the brush obviously was rotating at the fastest speed and it was still picking up I haven't tried this on boost I think if I do the machine will stall straight away but I'll give it a go As I suspected, on boost the motor head cut out straight away. There was no way I could use the machine on boost. On this particular carpet, on a shorter pile carpet, it would probably be okay. But if you've got a Saxony plush pile carpet like this, then boost is definitely a no-no. As I said, it works on the medium slash auto setting. Okay, quite hard to push. On eco, very easy to push. And I've noticed we have got some dirt here and... I can't fault Dyson's for picking up well, certainly when they're new. I don't know about after a year or two, but I'll, I'll zoom in and we'll see the dirt that this has picked up on a carpet that was vacuumed yesterday. I'm not sure if we can see in the bin, but there is some red glitter. And it was quite a while ago that I put down some glitter to make a demonstration of another vacuum. This was a vacuum from 1977, so I will forgive it that it left some dirt. So uh, I don't know if we can open it without losing the dirt Ugh. now there's a lot that's grit gritty particles can you hear it a bit of pet hair I always get that fluff but it's the gritty dirt that can damage your carpet if it's left in the carpet and you might just be able to see some red sand in there but that is very coarse heavier dirt and it's managed to pick that out of the carpet so yeah it's very good and there's a lot of fine dust as well just around the shroud look at that well actually not around the shroud the shroud is clean just a bit lower down there you can see that fine dust so yeah That pulsating sound is normal if you block the suction off or you get a blockage in one of the accessories or the wand, the cleaner will pulsate. That can also happen if you've never washed the filter. It senses that there's not enough airflow going through the machine, so it will start to pulse. So if any Dyson you've got, I think most of the cordless machines from the, for the last few years do this. If your Dyson starts to pulse, first thing you do, you check for a blockage, make sure there's no blockage, take the bin off. There's small inlets, you need to check there's no blockage in there, no blockage here, no blockage in any of the accessories or wand, and then take your filter off and make sure that you're given that a thorough clean. So that's it, that's vacuum of the month for September, my first Dyson in quite some time. So that's it, that's my vacuum of the month choice for September. Tune in on the 1st of October and I'll give you my full verdict of this machine when I've used it for a full month. I won't be using it for a full month in my home because one week in the month I'm going on holiday and another week of the month I'll be staying at my mum's house but I will be taking the Dyson with me and while I'm at my mum's I'm going to record a demo video of this. She's got lots of hard floor, more than I've got and she's got slightly less dense carpets, so the Dyson will probably work better on the sort of carpets my mum has in her home. If you have any comments or questions about this Dyson V12 Detect Slim Absolute, please comment below, and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.